Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining us today. Uh, we have quite a few people registered, and uh, so we're going to wait just one more minute to start. If you can all just be on standby, that would be great. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much for joining us. My name is Rebecca. I'm the Outreach Coordinator at ISC, Immigrant Services Calgary. Yes. Thanks. If we can all uh, stay on mute, that would be great. Before we start, I usually start um, our workshops with a land acknowledgement. And so I'd like to say that in the spirit of reconciliation, we acknowledge that we live, work, and play on the traditional territories of the Blackfoot Confederacy, the Siksigan, Kanai, and Begani, and the Sutina First Nations, as well as the Metis uh, region number three, and all the people who make their homes here in Treaty 7 region of Southern Alberta. For us, it's important to be part in, uh, of this reconciliation process, and a very small step towards that is to acknowledge the land on which we stand, but I do encourage everyone to do your own little part to learn about Indigenous history in our country. And uh, if you need any resources on that, feel free to reach out. So I'm just going to give you my contact information so you have it. So like I said, I'm the Outreach Coordinator at Immigrant Services Calgary. Um, our program is called Sustainable Neighborhoods Access Program, and we're lucky to be funded by United Way. And so we do a lot of community development projects around the city, as well as cultural sensitivity trainings such as this one. And so stay tuned for future ones. We have one coming up on November 19 as well. If you're interested um, in more trainings like this one, you can definitely send me an email. Um, my email is on the screen. It's Rebecca A at immigrantservicescalgary.ca. And so without further ado, I wanna introduce you to our speaker. Her name is Sally Okasha. She is a proud ISC I love Nye, and she's passionate about social justice. She works currently at Catholic Family Services as a Family Engagement Resource Coordinator. And today she's going to uh, do a presentation on microaggressions for us. So I'll get, I'm just going to stop sharing. Here we go. And hi, Sally. Hi. Hi, everybody. Uh, thank you so much for joining us today. I just want to make sure that everyone can hear me OK. Um, Rebecca, can you yep. guys? OK, yes. perfect. Uh, awesome. So we're going to get started. Um, I'm going to share my screen here. OK. Can you see my screen? Yes, yes, we can. Okay, perfect. Um, great. So again, my name is Sally. Um, I will, Rebecca already introduced me, but I will say that uh, I've always been passionate about social justice and equality and uh, doing our best to promote those two in our societies, whether that's in the workplace or in our schools uh, or just society in general. And I'm going to start off with a really um, short story. Uh, so this is my niece and nephew. Uh, my niece is Mace. She's nine years old. And Marwan is my nephew, and he is six. Um, they're the cutest things ever. And uh, we always enjoy doing things like going to the park and getting ice cream. So one day, uh, we were doing just that. I took them out for ice cream, and we were having fun. They were playing at the park. And we were approached by this um, older man who was making small talk. We talked about the weather. And then uh, the old older guy says to me, um, do they like Canada? Do, do, do your kids like Canada? He thought they were my children. I said, uh, sorry, what? <laughs> he said, yeah, like uh, you guys are not from here, right? I said, actually, no, um, they were both born and, and raised in Canada. 
they are Canadian. Um, and that kind of that moment, it made me reflect on why, why did he make that assumption? Um, I know he's trying to be nice, but why would he assume that I'm not from here? And uh, it kind of st stuck with me, um, that story. And <clears throat> pretty much um, inspired me to come up with this uh, idea of presenting uh, on, the, uh, on the concept of microaggression. Um, a lot of us, this is a new concept and we're going to explore the idea of a microaggression and what that means. Uh, but just, I'm sure lots of you have, have gotten comments like that. A lot of us immigrants or families uh, of immigrants uh, get the question of where are you from? Where are you really from? So the assumption is that we're not actually Canadian and constantly questioning our Canadianness. We'll talk more about that. But um, what is the objective or what's the point of this presentation? So um, the idea is to open up the conversation about something that is considered to be a little bit controversial or taboo. Um, talking about the impact of microaggressions and the ways we can address it. And uh, explore a little bit about some resources that can be helpful in um, learning more about it and uh, how to tackle it. So um, here are some examples of um, you know, some statements that would be considered microaggressions. So uh, one of them is like the one in my story, where are you from? No, where are you really from? So this is something that is sometimes comes out of genuine curiosity, yes. However, um, it does tend to make the person feel like an outsider, like they don't belong, like they're not really Canadian. And um, again, sometimes said with really good intention, but this is the point of this presentation is that some things that are meant to be um, said out of good intention end up actually being hurtful or harmful. Um, another one is, is this your real hair? Is, can I touch your hair? Um, a lot of us with curly hair get that a lot. Um, and again, can be interpreted uh, as curiosity, but can be, be very problematic. Um, another one that I get sometimes is, oh, you're really light skinned for an Arab. I know African Canadians who get that as well, as well as uh, Asians and Indians and uh, lots of different um, cultures will get this comment. And the reason this one is particularly problematic is that it assumes that we all look a certain way, that we're all homogenous, uh, that we lack some diversity and um, again, problematic. Uh, another one is, and this one's a really popular one, oh, your English is great for an immigrant, you know, and sometimes um, people would, were, that were born in Canada will get that comments as well. And again, assuming that they're not Canadian just because they are not Caucasian or they're not white. Um, another one, and this is about uh, families, um, you have children, so you must be married, right? Um, not necessarily the case. Families are come in all different shapes and sizes, uh, single parents, um, same-sex couples, all kinds of different uh, families that exist out there. And we should be conscious of that. Um, and then this one's my favorite. <laughs> you must adjust to Canadian culture. And this one is uh, interesting because what is Canadian culture? What, what defines Canadian culture? Again, going back to the idea of um, what Rebecca was saying about land acknowledgement. We all have to understand that Canada is really belongs to our First Nation people and um, you know, their culture is existed for many years and was, um, they were ethnically cleansed and their culture was taken away from them. But after that, what really defines Canadian culture? After that, we're all immigrants and Canadian culture can be lots of different things and mean lots of different things for lots of different people. Um, so what is microaggression? Um, and this might be a new word for a lot of us, but microaggressions are defined as brief and often subtle everyday events that denigrate individuals because they are members of a particular group. So um, why is this important for Immigrant Services Calgary? So this presentation started out as a staff 
uh, training. Uh, but in this case, um, we are some of us are volunteers with Immigrant Services Calgary, some of us are employees, and some of us are just uh, clients or people who are interested in this topic. Um, so why is this important in general, not just for Immigrant Services Calgary, but uh, it's important that uh, we try to maintain a safe space for all. Um, comments like the ones I showed earlier on can be very uh, ostracizing, can be very um, exclusive and uh, make people feel hurt. Uh, the other one is accountability culture. And this is something that a lot of us struggle with um, when we are in a situation uh, with people with positions of power. So sometimes your boss at work might say something that might be insensitive and you're too afraid to call them out on it because uh, you're afraid of the consequences. Um, but it is important that we all keep each other accountable when we say things that are harmful. And then finally, being uh, with Immigrant Services Calgary and just uh, Canada being extremely multicultural, it's very important that we cherish diversity and we uh, encourage diversity and we do that by uh, being sensitive and very conscious of our language and everything that we say, as well as uh, keeping each other accountable, which goes back to that accountability culture. So there are three types of microaggressions and the next three slides will um, get more into that. But the first one is called micro assaults. The second is micro insults and the third is micro invalidations. So micro assaults are intentional and deliberate. Uh, they explicitly discriminate and um, are prejudiced towards a particular group. Um, I would say micro assaults are the least common type of microaggressions in today's society. Um, and it's pretty much old fashioned racism, homophobia, sexism, that kind of thing. So an example of micro assaults is just denying service to a specific racial group uh, or using derogatory slurs to describe sexual minorities. The other two types of micro aggressions are more subtle. So micro insults are rude and insensitive comments or gestures that demean an individual's identity. Um, so this is basically comments about uh, your food, you're eating your, your cultural food and, and somebody makes an insensitive comment like, oh, that's really, that looks disgusting or that's really smelly. And, and I've gotten that myself. Um, micro invalidations are actions or words that exclude or are dismissive to someone's thoughts or feelings. And with micro invalidations, they're unintentional usually and subtle, like I mentioned. And, but at the same time, they highlight deeply entrenched biases and prejudice. So um, an example of this that comes to mind is uh, a colleague of mine said that um, while he was purchasing a house, uh, his realtor would only address him when they spoke about anything to do with selling the house. So um, was very dismissive of his white, who was a woman of who is a woman of color as well. So um, even though this is not something that's he's not saying any derogate, derogatory or offensive words to her, but just the fact that he was kind of ignoring her presence altogether said something about him that he was um, possibly had some sexist ideology or maybe even racist. Uh, it's hard to say, and it's hard to even call somebody out on this behavior because it is really subtle. Um, so one thing I wanted to mention is because of the subtlety um, of microaggression, it can be even more harmful than uh, the in your face micro, micro assaults where somebody's calling you names and that kind of thing. Why? Because it makes you doubt yourself. Um, it makes you unsure. It makes you feel like you're being dramatic, right? So victims are usually unsure of how to react, uh, which can cause significant distress on the person. And uh, they're thinking to themselves, am I overreacting? Should I say something? If I say something, it might make it worse. So um, these things can have a lot of effects. And there have been studies that actually showed that a lot of uh, people of color, especially in white dominant societies, um, end up in having suffering from mental illnesses and, and their mental health suffers 
due to an accumulation of lots of microaggressions here and there, little things here and there that end up uh, causing a lot of harm and devastation. So um, just because it's something that's unintentional does not mean the harm isn't there and it, it, doesn't, um, it doesn't take away from that. So what are some of uh, the psychological impacts of microaggression? So depression, right? So like um, if you're constantly being faced with insensitive comments and ma made to feel like an outsider, you're going to be depressed and lack motivation. Um, you're going to have lower self-esteem. You're going to feel like you're less than everybody else, especially if you um, are working in, in a place where the dominant culture is, is there and, and you're a minority. Um, I remember when I was in high school, I was a minority. Um, most, most of my uh, classmates were white and uh, I was one of very few people of color at my school. And I remember feeling um, just not like not being able to relate to my classmates and, and constantly being asked questions and, and made to feel like I just don't belong. And I know that my classmates didn't mean to make me feel this way, but this is why we were having these kinds of trainings because we can be also perpetrators of microaggressions. And that's, uh, we'll talk a bit about, about that later. But um, another one is anxiety. Sometimes people get paranoid as well. Like, is this person going to say something problematic to me? And you start associating certain uh, cultures with, uh, you know, certain insensitive comments or whatnot. Um, you're going to lose motivation to go to work if you're constantly being uh, confronted with microaggressions at work or at school. Um, sorry, I just noticed that depression is there twice, but, you know, uh, that's one of the big effects of uh, accumulation of microaggression and um, diminished cognition. So um, because you're always thinking about, you know, your colleagues or your coworkers or your classmates being insensitive to you and it's really affecting you, um, that might make you not focus on uh, your tasks and therefore uh, perform less. Um, so that's another thing that an accumulation of microaggression can do to a person. Um, so what can we do about microaggressions? So um, the first thing here is to listen. Um, we're so quick to be defensive if somebody confronts us with, hey, you did something that hurt my feelings. We're so quick to defend ourselves. Oh, I didn't mean to, oh, I, I was just curious. I, I love learning about new cultures. Um, you know, that's, that's, an, that's one of the things that people face a lot when people ask them where they're from. Um, you know, if, if you say, well, why are you asking me? I am from Canada. What makes you question my Canadianness? They'll say, oh, I just, I love learning about different cultures. I just want to know where you're from. That's totally fine. But you're not going around and asking every person you see, every white person you see where they're from. And that's something that we need to um, acknowledge because lots of people will say, uh, that, that's, that they do that, but the truth is they don't. They will ask that question specifically to people of color and it's usually because um, they just, you're not, you're not considered as Canadian when you're not uh, white, unfortunately. Um, another one is acknowledging that being dismissive is harmful. So uh, just because you ignore something doesn't make it go away, doesn't make it better. So um, again, if you're confronted with microaggressions, and somebody ignores you, that can actually be more harmful than if they had just said something derogatory to you. Not all the time, but it can be because it accumulates and then it makes you doubt yourself, like we said earlier. Um, practice some self-reflection. Think about the privileges that you have in society that others don't. So um, for example, I come from a middle-class background and that's something that um, sometimes I forget, right? Like we always, assume that everybody is, is comfortable financially and that's not the case. And you need to think about your position in society and how you might have privileges that others don't. And that can go for anything like class, age, um, ability, um, lots of different things, uh, sexual orientation, sex, uh, et cetera. Um, another one is take time to educate yourself. So. Um, it always starts with reading or watching a TED talk or a documentary. Uh, learn about things. Um, there are, there's a lot of literature out there about microaggressions and about racism and sexism and um, all the isms. Um, and it's always good to familiarize yourself with 
the literature that's out there and the resources. And finally, if you witness a microaggression, try to address it. Let me be clear about this one. This doesn't mean that you should go out to every person who ever asked uh, you or somebody else where they're from and confront them and fight them. This isn't about that. This is not about conflict and it's not about you noticing things um, and, and making issues out of things that don't need to be made an issue of. Be strategic. However, um, at the same time, if something makes you uncomfortable, trust your gut and know that it, you are uncomfortable for a reason and it's not because you're being uh, paranoid or you're being dramatic. Um, a lot of the times I don't really address when somebody says, ask me where I'm from and um, I kind of pick my battles. So um, I do it in a way that I ask some questions. Well, where are you from? And then they usually say, well, I'm from Canada. I'm like, no, 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 but where are you really from? And then that's when they're like, what do you mean where I'm, I'm from Calgary? And I say, exactly. So why are you allowed to say that you're from Calgary, but I can't? Um, it's a good, a good way of addressing this is just asking them questions and eventually getting them to come to the conclusion themselves. Um, and that is something that I should have done with that older man that I mentioned at the beginning of this presentation. But it was kind of shocking to me and I didn't know how to how to deal with it and that's again what inspired me to um, present about this because it's something that I feel a lot of people deal with but they're just not they don't really know how to address it um, and here's an interesting quote that I found is very relevant to the presentation so microaggressions are constant reminders that you don't belong that you are less than that you are not worthy of the same respect that other people are afforded they keep you off balance, keep you distracted, keep you defensive. They keep you from enjoying an outing on the town or a day at the office. Um, what I like about this quote is that it's, uh, it just like sums it up in a very simple way. Um, and it, microaggressions are not meant to completely be hostile. They're very everyday things, right? They're little stabs here and there. Um, and sometimes, like I said, very unintentional, but they can make you really uncomfortable and they can actually cause a lot of harm, like I mentioned earlier. So um, not just as victims of microaggressions, but as perpetrators, let's all try to be careful about the language that we use, our privileges and, and how we treat others and, and think about what we're saying and how it might affect another person. You might actually be curious about what the where the person's from. And sometimes I want to know where the person's from because I, I'm also curious, but I'm like, no, if they say they're Canadian, they're Canadian. I, I, I don't need to ask any more questions. And I have to admit, I fall into it as well um, because that's what, we're, that's what we've been uh, conditioned to do, to question uh, people who are people of color uh, and assume that they're not actually from here. Uh, but it is problematic and it's harmful. Um, so finally, um, here are some resources on um, what, you know, things that you can learn from how to address uh, microaggressions. So the first one is uh, People's Cafe at Action, Action Dignity. Uh, and this is a program that is, um, that helps raise awareness about uh, racism and um, other social justice issues. Um, Center for Newcomers has a great program for LGBTQ plus newcomer settlement. Um, so that's one that's specific for that, but it's a great resource as well. Uh, the Calgary Anti-Racism Education um, is, is a, an awesome resource. And it's, it's again, um, an educational resource for people to learn more about racism. And then the last one I have here is YYC Colors. A lot of people tend to think that Calgary does not have any races, a racism problem, or some, some people even think Canada doesn't have a racism problem. Unfortunately, that's very far from the truth. Uh, we do have a racism problem. Our country was founded on colonial, um, you know, colonialism, and that entailed uh, a lot of racism and a lot of ethnic cleansing and theft of culture and of land. So uh, not to mention that today, people of color in Calgary suffer, as well as other cities in Canada suffer from uh, lots of different systematic issues. So uh, I thought this documentary was great for people who wanted to learn more about um, racism in Calgary. Um, so that is 
it for the presentation. I would be more than happy to take on some questions and I would love to hear about some uh, of your experiences with microaggressions or things that you maybe you, you were not sure about and you wanted to know if that, that would be considered a microaggression. It doesn't really matter what we label them as, but um, I think it helps to kind of talk about these things and, and kind of validate your feelings that something was, uh, was not right. Um, and yeah, thank you so much for um, watching my presentation. I hope you enjoyed it and you learned something. And again, I would love to hear from you, any questions or comments. And yeah, thank you. I'm gonna stop sharing. Thank you, Sally. So feel free to um, write any questions on the chat. I will also check on Facebook Live if there's any questions or you feel free to turn your microphone on if you're comfortable and asking questions or sharing any comments that you might have. Thank you so much, Sally, for the presentation. I think we'll wait a couple more minutes. I was, um, one thing that kept going through my mind is, and I've been working in this field for over 10 years. I've studied, you know, related field. I've done cross-cultural communication courses, but mm -hmm. I found, you know, 10 years ago, I was the one committing these microaggressions myself. And so it's like such a learning process. Um, but I'm so yeah grateful that you're here to talk to us about it. Um, but I just want to say, for me, I feel like it's it's great that we're here that we want to learn about it. Um, I don't want to feel <laughs> I don't want to make anyone feel guilty um, for anything. I think as long as we're co constantly learning and evolving, um, that's mm -hmm. really what matters, right? Yeah, totally. And I think like um, the idea is not to make anybody feel guilty but also acknowledge that we're all, like you said, we're all, uh, we've all done it at one point, including myself, mm -hmm. right? Like we were ignorant and or we just didn't know and we were genuinely curious, but the idea is that we have to be careful about what we say and, and how we even think about things because um, privilege is so, is so important in this. Totally. And I feel like Sometimes I get that, you know, that I get the question often where I'm from or where's your family from. Um, I feel that I'm not offended by it if I, if my conversation with someone has gotten to a certain level of trust or where I've alluded to the fact that I'm not, that I wasn't born here. Mm -hmm. But yeah, if it comes out of nowhere, just because I have a slight accent, then <laughs> yeah, it bothers me. Yeah, I think a lot of a lot of um, newcomers feel the same way because, and a lot of them, you know, they grew up learning English and and uh, have excellent English, and they come here and they're they're told, oh, your English is so good, and it's like, it's almost like, yeah, I've heard people say it's really insulting when people say that to me, and they again, it's supposed to be a compliment, but it comes off kind of insensitive. So, yeah, totally. Let me see if there's any questions here. No, I don't see anything on Facebook. <laughs> you know, I always, I always took that as a, like people, when people says that to me, I know they're just trying to be nice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's how I take it, like, oh, you're trying to be so nice because I'm really aware of my strong <laughs> accent. I just uh, don't give them, like, I don't mind because, yeah, but I guess, has like we need to be mindful of other people that that, that can hurt them. Mm -hmm. I, I never compliment anyone. Like <laughs> I have, I'm no one to do so <laughs> because of my English. But I I don't get offended if someone asks me where are you from or like it's, I I think they're just trying to make a conversation or mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. it's not a kind of question that I will ask either. Mm -hmm. But it's important to learn this, as you say, like to be mindful of others, like they might get hurt or don't mm -hmm. like this or 
any experience, any reasons that they are just different from us. Everyone yeah. One, yeah, individual. Yeah, really very interesting. I learned a lot. I joined late, but uh, yeah. Oh, there is a question, Rebecca. Oh yeah, so when you get insulted, how do we educate that individual? How do you deal with that person? That's a great question, actually. Sometimes I wonder how to react myself. Yeah, and I think we all experience that. Um, I always think asking questions is the best way to get somebody to reflect. Uh, so um, let's, for example, take, you know, the example of where are you from? Um, I'm from Canada. Well, where are you, where are you actually from? Calgary, actually, I'm <laughs> from Calgary. Um, no, 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 like, where are you really from? And then I would say, oh, um, I'm just like curious uh, why you're asking this. Like, you know, what, what is it about this question? That, like, why are, you, why are you assuming I'm not from Canada? And then they're going to say something that they probably will realize right there that they're going to say something problematic. Like, well, you don't look Canadian. And then you ask them, well, what does a Canadian look like? And then they're going to give you the answer and you're going to say, well, actually Canadians don't just look white. So in a way, I know it's hard, especially on the spot when you're angry, but um, if you can just ask them questions until you get to the point where they're basically giving it to you, giving the answer to you. Another way is to, like I said earlier, just, you know, ask them the same question. Uh, you can do that. And then you can also just be direct and say, um, your comment is, is very insensitive and, and made me uncomfortable. And, um, and they'll probably say, oh, I didn't mean to make you uncomfortable. And you can say, okay, I accept your apology, just so you know, and just educate them. Like there, there's a way to go about it with being really diplomatic. You don't need to attack anybody. And like I said, they probably do have good intentions. However, it doesn't mean that they should continue to do it to others because you might have been insulted and not have said anything, but somebody else is going to be really hurt because this is probably, who knows, how, like it might be the 10th person in their week that asked them where they're from, right? Um, what about the question, what is your heritage? How does that sit? I feel like that's what the where are you from question is trying to get at. Um, that's, that's an interesting one. I think like, Context is so important, right? Like if, if you're in a place, if you like um, Maria and Rebecca said, if you're comfortable with this person and you know that this is someone you can trust and they're genuinely just really curious about your heritage and they want to make a connection with you, maybe they have a similar heritage. You can kind of get those vibes, right? But um, I'm talking about an example, like the one I mentioned in my presentation where it's out of nowhere, you don't know this person. And the first thing they say to you is, how do you like Canada? And in that, in that way, you know that they're just trying to, you know, make you feel a certain type of way. Um, I think, again, read the situation, read the context. If it doesn't bother you, I'm not saying it should, but um, it, it's just something to think about when, those, when people ask you those questions or make those assumptions about you. And like I said, I also make those assumptions as well about others. I want to, if I see Middle Eastern looking people, I want to ask them where they're from so that I can connect with them, right? So I can yeah. be, oh, I'm from there too, right? So there's there's a difference between how it's asked and what the context and who's asking, honestly. Same. I wanted to mention a couple of things. I remember two examples. One that, uh, and to be honest to myself, when they happen to me, I don't know how to react in the moment. And I'll often just go about my day and like not even react. And so I need to like prepare myself for the next time that I experience it. <laughs> but um, like my, my kids, for example, they're both, Maria knows they're both blonde. And so I remember being at the grocery store with them once and the cashier asking me if they were my children. And so I was like, okay <laughs> was taken back but I didn't I didn't take the opportunity to educate the person mm -hmm. and then the other one was actually last week and we were at a community event and this is kind of related to COVID but um we started talking about how cases have gone up so much 
And then one community partner that was part of this event planning, who I just met that day said, you know, it's all these cultural gatherings that are spreading mm. virus. And I was like, oh my gosh, do I react right <laughs> Like they're part of, we're planning this event together right now. Like, so it's, it's so subtle. And if you don't pay attention, like they, they just pass you by. But I think, I, I don't know if I would reach out to that person now and say, you know, last week you said this, or if I just missed my opportunity. You should have invited them to this presentation. <laughs> I, yeah, yeah. I will send them a copy of the presentation. <laughs> yeah. But, but like uh, like Sally says, like if people will assume stuff. Like that's how not like I have to buy diapers for my program, and uh, sometimes I buy like ten boxes, and people think that it, they ask me how many kids do you have. Oh my gosh, that's insane. <laughs> it's like yeah, like I just laugh. But for me, it's funny. Like, uh, but uh, I wonder. Like, I would like to hear from you. Like, what do you suggest? Like. I don't get off. I personally don't get offended when people ask me because, yeah, like I'm obviously <laughs> not <laughs> Canadian. But uh, I, when I get offended, I can say when the people, uh, when I then answer like I'm from Colombia, you know what the ultimate answers will be. Just yeah. regard, like like they always talk about our political and other problems <laughs> yeah. than we have. So in that part, yeah, like that is for sure is an aggression and really strong. Like that, I wanted to say is a microaggression. Like how how do you suggest us to uh, to reply to answer to that in a still a polite and respectful ma uh, manner? Just so I know, I, I understand what you're saying. When people make assumptions about your country or where you're from? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like very, you know, like everybody mm -hmm. knows about Colombians problems with the exportation yeah. oh okay so <laughs> the drug cartels you know they, they always yeah yeah i mean um they might not interpret it as polite per se the person you can try your best to be polite but you can just say um just educate them say you know there's there's so much more to colombia than than you think it's it's uh, you've obviously seen the side of it. That's what's portrayed in the media, but that's nothing what the reality is. And we actually have beautiful beaches and, and like, you know, coffee, <laughs> coffee. and it's, it's, Columbia is beautiful. I've never been, but I've seen pictures and stuff um, and videos. And, um, you know, you can maybe suggest a documentary or um, a book. Like I always do that when I'm, I, I want to educate people on, um, the Middle East, I suggest certain books or, or videos or anything like that. But, or I'll just say, you know, you should go visit. Like You should go see it, check it out for yourself. Um, it's not a dangerous place. And that's, I get that as well. Like I'm, I'm originally Palestinian and um, that's, that's the only thing people know about Palestine is the conflict. They think it's just, it's all conflict. That's not, not true at all. Um, we have a lot of culture, a lot like dancing and, and, and weddings. And there's so much more to who we are than just the political conflict. And, uh, or people just assume all Middle Eastern people are religious, right? They're like, oh, like you must be a Muslim, right? And I'm like, no, actually, like not every, most, not every Arab is a Muslim. Like there are Christians that are Arab and people don't know that. So you just need to kind of educate them in a nice way. And sometimes people are really grateful. Like I've had people say, oh my God, thank you so much. I didn't know. And some people just, it'll go in one ear and come out the other. And, uh, but you, you have to do what you feel is comfortable for you. So if you don't want to have that conversation, it's not your job to educate people either. So that's something to keep in mind. You're not there to, to educate people. They have access to internet. They can access all, the, all this information. But if you want to, and you have the time and, and energy, then you can, you can, like I said, just educate them, recommend a video documentary. Um, with YouTube, there's a tons of material out there that you can suggest. Yeah, I love it. No, thank you. Because actually, yeah, it's another way to show them that there is more than that. Like, you know, like Colombians, we are polite too. <laughs> we can yeah, be that's polite. <laughs> <And nice. laughs> thank you, Sally. Thank you. Yeah, Sally. you're welcome. I hope there that is another question, question, Rebecca. A good one. A very good question there. 
Thank you. Yeah, we have a, a question from one of our participants. It's uh, microaggression and offense under criminal code of Canada. No, that's not. <laughs> um, because it's so subtle, right? Like, how mm -hmm. do you call the person out? They could, they could genuinely, honestly, not even know that they were doing anything that's um, offensive or insensitive. They could, like I said, most microaggressions are probably coming from a place of pure ignorance and sometimes even just curiosity. Um, but the more that we educate people, I think the more that they're less likely to do it again. So if, if you're telling that person like that made me uncomfortable and explain why, chances are they're not going to do it again because they're going to feel like, oh, what I did wasn't actually a nice thing to do. Mm -hmm. um, or maybe this person's going to lecture me about being insensitive as well. Uh, but no, it's not. Um, I think micro assaults would be like, definitely would be because they would be in violation of your, uh, the rights, your Canadian, your charter of rights. And um, <clears throat> that's, that would be a different case, but that's more like obvious in your face. Racism. Well, like micro assaults, Sally, how would that be? Sorry, can you give an example of yeah, so let's say like I go into a restaurant and the owner's like, I don't want any Arabs in here. Mm -hmm. I, I don't want, yeah, that would be like my, or somebody calling me like uh, a, a racial slur mm -hmm. or um, like a derogatory sexist term, something like that, like very obvious stuff. That would be like considered probably a hate crime mm -hmm. and, and depending on the context and everything, but yeah. Well, thank you so much. I think for myself, what I take out of this presentation is I'll gather the courage next time to have an uncomfortable conversation with whoever is uh, saying a microaggression in my direction. Because I think it's, I think we don't like, like Maria was saying, we don't like being rude or mm -hmm. a situation uncomfortable, but mm -hmm. we don't. If we just let it pass that person, doesn't know that what they just said, even though it might not have it might not have been ill intended, was was actually uh, microaggression. So I think I'll take it upon myself to make it uncomfortable next time, and and awesome. it whoever <laughs> is carrying on a microaggression. And they always say um, discomfort is like the first step towards change. So mm -hmm. you know, if somebody calls you on your microaggression you're probably not going to do it again. You're going to learn something and you're going to respect them. So yeah, it's great that you're planning to do that. I, I struggle with that as well. <laughs> so. Oh, yes, it's hard. Well, thank you so much. Um, I'm just going to double check on Facebook Live. We don't have any other questions and on our chats. So thanks everyone for joining us today. Um, I'll be sending you an email with an evaluation so you can help me with some feedback. Um, super important that we get feedback so that we can continually improve. And um, stay tuned. Also, if you want to register for our next cultural sensitivity session, it's going to be on November 19th, same time. And it's going to be about embracing diversity. So thank you so much, Sally, for today's presentation. And thanks, everyone, for joining us. And I hope you have a great evening. Thank you for having me. Thanks. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you, Sally.